Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and today we are kicking off our series on the cities in the cities of Sigmar with Hammer Hall, our channel's namesake, the capital city of uh, city, the cities of Sigmar, and uh, the first one in the listing in the book. So here we go. The city in general is sort of all about duality. It can be either from Akshi or Gyron, so unlike the other cities that are anchored to one, you do get the choice of two here, which is a nice little boon for you when you're building your lists. The abilities in this really reflect that sort of duality. You have a bunch of things that are really oriented around offensive buffs, and you have a bunch of things oriented around defensive buffs. And the reflection of that sort of capital city, you have a lot of ways to get additional command points. So you're very command point heavy. And what I like to think of this as is the, the buffs in this city are sort of like win mores on the things that you already want to do. So it buffs you on offense when you're offensive. It buffs you on defense when you're defensive. So, our command point engines. So, we have uh, two battle traits that give us additional command points. Banners held high. Uh, in your hero phase, you roll a d6 for each of your standard bearers, and you get a CP for each six that you roll. That is incredibly powerful. I've been typically running lists with like seven or eight banners in them. And it's like not even hard to do that. So this really is kind of encouraging MSU style forces. But you know, if you're running seven or eight banners in your list, you're probably going to get a command point every turn in addition to what you would ordinarily be getting. Uh, you have the Magister of Hammer Hall ability. Uh, if Aventus Fire Strike is your general, you get an extra command point. That doesn't really come up a lot. Um, I don't think that that's like a fluffy thing to do. That's not necessarily a good thing to do. Then we have a command trait, the Academy Prodigy. You get an extra command point uh, as well as plus one attack on the general's melee weapon. Um, our battalion is also really good. I'm going to talk about that later. So it's very easy to get an extra command point in your list by taking that battalion it's just a bunch of demi griff knights and a uh, free guild general on griffin so it's very strong and as always you can buy a command point in your list and if you have uh, a general that is six wounds or less you can take your general's adjutant to uh, roll a d6 in each hero phase and get another command point on a four up but that is you know cities of sigmar allegiance abilities and battle traits um but you can see from all of that you know you're potentially producing uh, you know two to three command points a turn if you're uh using an adjutant and you've got a bunch of banners and you're starting off with you know your uh, command trait that can give you an extra command point and a battalion and buying one in your list like you can really have a ton of command points coming out of hammer hall and it's very powerful to do so our offensive abilities here we have our command ability righteous purpose uh, when our troops are in enemy territory, you can spend a command point to have them fight a second time at the end of the combat phase. Our command traits, uh, again, Academy Prodigy, plus one attack on your general's melee weapons. Uh, Blood of the Twelve, uh, rerolls uh, wounds of one wholly within 12 inches of the general. And Aggressive General gives you plus one to hit within 12 inches of the General if the General charged that turn. 
a uh, couple of offensive artifacts. The Saint's Blade uh, adds one to the rend and uh, plus one damage when you're within six inches of an objective marker. So that is potentially really powerful uh, for buffing up one of your uh, melee weapons on your general. The Twin Stone, this one is you know, potentially offensive or defensive, depending on which aspect you choose in your hero phase. But for offense, you can choose to give units wholly within 12 inches of your general plus, or of the bearer of the Twin Stone, plus one to hit. Um, and that is decided in your hero phase, wholly within 12 inches of the bearer. So we've got two offensive spells. Wings of Fire has a casting value of six, and it gives plus one to run and charge, and it makes that unit fly for the turn. And then the Twin-Tailed Comet, casting value of seven, 18 inch range, it does D3 mortal wounds and D6 mortal wounds if the unit has 10 or more models. Then we have our Battalion, which is very powerful on the offense. The Hammerhallian Lancers, it's three units of Demigriffs and a unit, um, I'm sorry, and uh, a Free Guild General on Griffin. And they all get plus one to hit and wound when they charge and are wholly within 18 inches of the Griffin in that Battalion. So a lot of really powerful stuff that buffs your offense here. Uh, personally, what I have been running is the Academy Prodigy command trait. So I get the extra attack and I put that on my Free Guild General on Griffin, buffing his Great Hammer. And then I give him uh, a defensive artifact, the... Uh, uh, the armor that gives you plus one to save. Um, Righteous Purpose is incredibly strong, although you definitely want to take note here that you need to pay attention to your battle plans when you are starting the game so you actually know where your enemy territory is because it's not always just half of the board. Uh, very often it's going to be like just your opponent's deployment zone is going to be enemy territory, so this command ability isn't always going to be that useful. But when it is, holy crap, is that really good. Wings of Fire is also a really strong uh, spell, uh, adding plus one to your charge um, and run and making a unit fly. That is very good. The Twin Stone and Aggressive General, uh, there's that sort of depends on what factions you're playing. Uh, I find that in Free Guild, it is really redundant to have those, so they're not as useful. So I've been going with some other options. The Saint's Blade, I think, is sort of situational on like who your general is, on whether or not you're going to be using that. Personally, I think the Armor of Malice is generally better. And, of course, the Hammerhallian Lancers, this is just like my favorite thing to do with this city. I don't see myself ever building a Hammerhall list and not running this battalion. Like, I just personally don't see it. I think it's probably the optimal way to be running Hammerhall. So on defense, we have our battle trait, the Pride of Hammer Hall. We don't take Battleshock tests in our own territory. Uh, now, again, same note as before, you have to pay attention to where your territory actually is. And this is a wholly within ability, so you need to make sure you're keeping your units tight, measure up, so you make sure that you're wholly within your own territory to avoid that Battleshock. Uh, artifacts, the Armor of Malice gives plus one save. That is incredibly strong. I've been running that on my free guild uh, general on Griffin. And it give him a shield and his great hammer. And he's on a two up save uh, and doing a whole lot of damage. You can do the same thing with the Dreadlord on Black Dragon. You can put him on a two up save as well. Then the Twin Stone, when you use the Gyron aspect 
of the twin stone it in your hero phase you roll a d6 for each unit that is wholly within 12 inches of the bearer and on a four up it heals d3 so that is situationally good and it definitely does have some power to it and then our defensive spell, we have Cinder Cloud with a casting value of 7. And units wholly within 9 inches of the caster are minus 1 to be hit in melee. So, actually, I think it, it may be melee and in shooting. So, this is, a, you know, debuffing your opponent when they are coming in after... Uh, your main lines uh, wholly within nine inches is a pretty tight bubble so out of all of this I really uh, I, Pride of Hammer Hall is a very strong ability just never taking battle shock and very frequently you're not going to be worrying about battle shock on the things in your opponent's territory and anytime that you're like a not in your own territory, you are definitely going to have the command points to make Battle Shock never an issue. But this lets you save even more command points to like just stay on the offensive and you know, use all of those other uh, command abilities that you have at your disposal. Uh, Armor of Malice in general, I really like. You know, we have a, a couple of things that we can put on a two up save, a whole bunch of things that we can put on like a three up save. So it, it's going to really preserve your important heroes. And I think Twin Stone's ability to heal is actually pretty good as well. So actually playing this army, it, it really rewards doing what you want to do already anyway. When you're in your territory, it's per that's when you're sort of on the defense. It's preventing battle shock. When you're in your opponent's territory, you can get double pile-ins. You know, you have offensive buffs for you know all of the things that you just are going to do anyway, and defensive buffs for things that you want to do anyway. I think in general, it really this is about melee armies and you're not going to get much out of this if you're running a lot of shooters um you know it might be good to sort of kind of castle around shooting units so that you know you're hard to erode your screening or chaffing units but i think that in general, like this army is much more about melee than it is about shooting. That said, I'm not saying don't take shooting in this. This is not just not the the city that is about doing crazy shenanigans with shooting. Um, and your extra command points, those like totally amplify the power of your heroes. So our synergies with the various different factions. So Free Guild obviously is like an easy choice because that's uh, where our battalion is. So you're already going to be putting a lot of points into you know demi griff knights and a Free Guild general on Griffin, and then having the general on Griffin also then synergize with your other units if you're running additional free guild. So it it's definitely going to kind of revolve around using that battalion. I think your sort of second best option here is probably Darkling Coven and the command underlings uh, command ability that's on your sorceress and your sorceress on black dragon lets you run in charge. And then... With all of the extra command points you have, it's easy to set those run rolls to sixes. All of your guys are plus one to run and plus one to charge. So, and all of your guys are base movement of six. So, you it's easy to take your command points and take a big block of say thirty executioners. Use command underlings, set the run roll to six, and then have 
you know, a 13 inch move and then a charge on plus one, you know, and then you have your sorceress and you can, uh, use, um, uh, I'm blanking on the name of the spell, the spell from the spell lore that gives you plus one to run in charge. It's giving you now 14 inches of movement and casting it off of your sorceress is going to be on plus two. So it's really easy to cast. So you can move 14 inches and then charge on plus two. So that gives you, you know, uh, fr- on a deployment where you're 24 inches away from your opponent, you would have to roll an eight on the charge at that point, and you would probably have command points for a reroll. So, you know, you can take big blocks of infantry and, like, alpha strike with them very easily with Darkling Coven. Uh, similarly, also in Free Guild, like, your demigriffs kind of, kind of, you know, go without saying that especially on the 18 inch deployments, your demigriffs can get into your opponent's lines very easily on the top of turn one. Order Serpentis, I think is another strong choice here. The Dreadlord on Black Dragon and your Drake Spawn Knights. Um, those are going to take a similar sort of role to your demigriffs and your free guild general on Griffin. I think this is a less powerful version of that build, but if you happen to have a Dreadlord and a bunch of uh, Drake Spawn Knights, uh, this is probably a good thing to think about. This is, you know, going to be a good way to play those models if that's just what you have. Um, Wanderers, uh, I kind of struggle to see where they're going to really do well here. Um, you know, your Eternal Guard are extra good on defense, and your Wild Riders are, they're very punchy, fast cavalry, but uh, they only have a 5-up save. So, I, I'm i not sure what to do there. Um, I feel like this is not a very good city if you're working from Dispossessed. They are... It, they're slow on foot. And yes, you do have the command points to set all of their run rolls to sixes on the first turn and move your guys up quickly. Um, so that, I guess, is sort of an option there, but I think there's a lot of other cities that just do Dispossessed better. Like, I think Living City and Tempest Sai in particular are much better if you're working with Dispossessed, you know, Tempest Sai gives you that extra movement in the first turn, and the Living City lets you do the ambush uh, and on the first turn. So, you know, bringing in, like, Iron Drank- Drakes off the flanks is really good. Um, I think that's, in general, better than what you'd be able to do in Hammer Hall. And, of course, like, uh, Phoenix Temple, I, I I guess, I guess, I mean, I don't really see f- playing Phoenix Temple outside of Phoenicium. That's really where that shines. So, yeah, it just sort of a uh, general idea here. But you notice that the common thread among this is like, who is really going to benefit from all those command points and who is going to you know, have extra punch and movement to get into your opponent's territory and really get some powerful charges off, get the double pile-ins, you know, utilize those cavalry bonuses, all of those sorts of things. You know, I think Free Guild has a lot of ability to get across the board very quickly. Darkling Coven gets across the board quickly. Order Serpentis gets across the board really quickly. Uh, Wanderers, yes, the Wild Riders can get there fast, but they're just going to be a glass cannon. Speaking of cavalry charges, so I think this is really the city that likes cavalry the best. And the new, like, cavalry lance ability 
that is sort of universal across all of these units that have it. Um, you know, putting your melee attacks to rend two and two damage when your cavalry unit charges, like that has made these units really punchy and strong. And it's been quite a while since like cavalry was really good in Age of Sigmar. We've had a lot of things like the Iron Jaws pigs that, you know, they're they're fast chaff. You know, they're a really mobile anvil. We haven't had for a while uh, cavalry that really takes that hard hitting sort of approach that, you know, classically in Warhammer, we would think that cavalry is for, you know, it moves really fast. It picks its combats and, you know, it really is devastating to your opponent when you get those charges off. That's something that we have not seen in Age of Sigmar really pretty much ever. Like, it hasn't really been that much of a thing. Maybe early on, um, you know, it was fairly powerful, but um, it had, it, cavalry kind of went out of fashion for quite a while. And now I feel like with Hammer Hall in particular, I think it could make a comeback. Um, all of your units in this army are plus one to run and charge, so that synergizes really well with cavalry, getting additional charge buffs. You know, you have your spells to get you charge buffs. Um, you have your uh, Darkling Coven run and charge. You know, all of these things, they synergize really well with the city and the big thing is having that movement to get across the board and get your combats in your opponent's territory as much as you can and pick your combats be kind of like surgical about where your units are going, what combats you're getting involved in. So I think this is sort of like this, like lost art of cavalry in Warhammer. And I'm, thinking that it's going to catch a lot of people with their pants down. Like they're just not going to see it coming because like nothing else has done this in a while. Like, you know, cavalry isn't, you know, up until now, isn't what it used to be. It's become this thing where, you know, you have these durable high wound units that are okay on offense but you're just moving them up the board to kind of like alpha block your opponent. And they're not really strong offensive pieces, but they get the job done. So I think because people are not going to be expecting that, it really gives us an advantage here to take the opportunity with Hammer Hall and really take that cavalry you know your free guild general on griffin your dread lord on black dragon your demigriffs your drake spawn knights your wild riders and you know all of your darkling coven units that are going to run in charge you know take all of that and really utilize like the psychology that that creates and get your opponent on the back foot a lot the high movement that you have really lets you kind of control the battlefield without actually, it kind of like lets you finesse control the battlefield instead of getting your units like right up in your opponent's face and controlling the battlefield that way. I feel like I could do like a whole video just on cavalry charges and uh, how that used to be a thing and it's really not anymore R.I.P. Bretonia. And, um, but I, I, I think, you know, specifically with the battalion in this city, uh, combining that with our Demigriff Knights uh, that are just crazy strong on the charge already, like, I think it's going to be very powerful. 
So that one is in the can for now, folks. Uh, so like and subscribe for more videos. I'm going to be continuing on through all of the cities in the cities of Sigmar. Hit that notification bell to get alerts when we post up new videos. And of course, if you want to help us improve our content, support us on Patreon. And 100% of our Patreon proceeds go towards making improvements to the channel. Nothing's going in our pocket. It's all getting reinvested directly back into content for our viewers. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you all later.